Hi, I'm Barry Garcia with Nanlite, and today we're gonna to talk about color temperature, how we measure it, what it's good for, and how it will help you to understand what color temperature is in a light. And the lights we're gonna talk about are the 300B and the 60B. Now you may already know all about LEDs and color temperature, but for the folks that don't know it as well, this is gonna help you understand how Nanlite picks their LEDs as well as measures the different types of LEDs that we have. And this is going to help you measure your lights. Being a professional content creator can be a dilemma sometimes in deciding what type of light am I gonna use? Do I need a tungsten light or a tungsten color or do I need a daylight? Either one of those will do, but what will really work for you is a bicolor light. A bicolor light's gonna give you the best of both worlds and it's gonna make it easy for you to do your shoot. A bicolor light is going to include both daylight LEDs as well as tungsten LEDs. And this can come in different configurations, whether it's ribbons, panels, or a chip on board. Now, these are gonna give you the ability to be able to mix with practical lights, sunlight, or even other LEDs. And that's gonna give you a much better scene. So, kind of a simple explanation of what color is, is that red and orange colors are really warmer colors. And then blue and cyan are much cooler colors. Now these colors allow the creator to actually guide us into situations that they wanna get more of an emotional response from and help tell the story. Now, color temperature is measured in Kelvin, and we use Kelvin to measure light bulbs and LEDs. This allows us to know that the higher the Kelvin, the whiter the light is going to be. You can see all this along the CIE 31 along the black body locus. When we test an LED, it gives us a baseline of what color we can use in that light, but it also allows us to know where we're gonna use that in our scene. Now, to test with an LED, we're gonna use a spectrometer. What does a spectrometer do? It allows us to be able to hold it up in front of the light and measure what that Kelvin temperature is that's coming from the light. So, what's a bicolor light? A bicolor light is something that starts at 3200 degrees Kelvin and has a color range all the way up to 5600 degrees Kelvin, which is daylight. So, if we're looking at different types of color temperature and we're starting at the bottom, I would say 1900 to about 2700 degrees Kelvin, you're looking at that candle flame or the fire effect that you might see in some of the special effects. Moving up from like 3000 up to 5600, at 3200 degrees Kelvin, that's that tungsten light we're talking about that you usually see in like your living room and some of the lamps. At 5600 degrees Kelvin, you're getting that daylight color temperature, which is ideal for your camera. Now, jumping to 6,500 degrees Kelvin, that's more of a cloudy sky that you might have outside. And lastly, up to about 10,000 degrees Kelvin, we're seeing that clear blue sky, which is what we have outside. So what Nanlite does is they use an industrial spectrometer that tests for color temperature as well as for the brightness of the light. Now, they'll take the actual fixture itself and put it inside an enclosure that closes around it. This measures the color accuracy as well as the color fidelity and the output of the light itself. Now remember, they're looking for two stable color temperatures, 5600 degrees Kelvin, as well as 3200 degrees Kelvin, because these are the two color temperatures we use most when we're shooting things. So Nanlite's fixtures have really stable color, and that comes from the high quality bin chips that they use to make their lights. Now typically, they measure the LEDs with no type of modifier in front of it. This gives them an unbiased color measurement. So to be able to test, you're going to need a color meter. Now, there are a lot of color meters out on the market, but you're gonna need something that's gonna be able to test for Kelvin, CRI, TLCI, SSI, and TM30. These are all things that you're gonna be able to test for color temperature. Now, one of the ones that are most common on the market, the Sekonic C800 color meter, gives us the ability to test all of those, and that's what we're gonna to use today. So one of the most important parts is to make sure that you're in a dark room where the only light that you're getting is from the fixture that you're testing. You need to measure out about three to six feet from the light fixture to the wall so that you can actually test and get a proper color temperature. So remember, the temperature range can go anywhere plus or minus 200 degrees, up or down. Now, don't panic if you don't get the same reading every single time, because typically a light's going to give you a little bit of a different reading every single time. Now, LEDs themselves can shift in color depending on the modifier. Now, Nanlite includes a reflector that actually shifts the color either up or down depending on the bicolor light. It's good to understand how modifiers can change the color output of a light. 
So you want to test with your modifiers on your fixtures to understand how they're going to change that color temperature. So we're going to set the light on the stand and tighten it down. Now I've already placed my stand about six feet from my background because six feet is usually about where we're gonna set things when we set up for interviews or B-roll. And we're standing in a dark room right now because I wanna get an accurate measure of what this light's giving me as far as Kelvin goes. The next thing we're gonna do is grab a color meter because we're gonna need a color meter to be able to read the Kelvin from this light. So let's go ahead and turn this guy on. And there's a couple things that we need to do to set the meter up so that it's properly ready to go to take a measurement. Now, one of the first things you're gonna see is the CCT mode. That's gonna give us our Kelvin temperature, which is what we're looking for. But you're also gonna see TLC9 and R9. These are just gonna give us some color information on the actual light itself. And then lastly, you've got an X and Y coordinate. This just gives me where things fall on the spectrum. So what I'm looking to do here though, is I need to do a calibration on this. So we're gonna click that over and do a bar, dark calibration and click yes. So now it's calibrating itself, the white, the black point, kind of everything in between. But the other thing that we need to do is we also need to be able to set the target. Now, what we mean by that is we need to match this light, this meter, so that it matches the light that we have at 5600 Kelvin right now. So to do that, we're gonna hit our target button here at the top. We're gonna hit five, six, zero, and hit okay. And now our target's ready to go, right there at 56. Our light is 56. We're gonna turn our light all the way up to 100% now, so we get a nice good reading. And here we go, let's take a reading. We're gonna take our hotspot reading right here. 5594, 5595, which is a good reading actually for a 5600 Kelvin light. Now let's move over about a foot or so to the right. So we're at 5577. This is 5576. Not too bad. Now we're gonna move back over here to this side and we're looking at 5601, 5607. Now remember, each time we take a reading, it's never going to be the same. So 5585 is where I am now in the center. And on this side, if I go back again, 5604. So I've shifted each time from where we are, but again, we're still within that plus or minus 100 that we need to be for this light. Let's come back and do the tungsten side to see what this light's got. First thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn this light down to 3200 degrees Kelvin. There we go, we're at 32. Now we are also going to have to set up our meter as well. I need to actually hit the target again and hit three, two, zero, zero, and hit okay. And now we're set for basically being able to take our Kelvin reading. So let's take a reading. Let's go to the hot spot, 3192 and then another reading at 3193. So we're looking almost at 3200 degrees Kelvin, but let's look to the right side real quick. 3197, pretty close. 3197 again, and then we'll move over here to the left, see what we get. 3198, a little closer. 3198, that's not bad. Okay, so let's try with the reflector that actually comes with the light and we'll go take a reading. So here's a quick explanation on the readings. Now, the 300B uses the reflector to make the light brighter. And sometimes it can double the brightness. Now, what happens when you're using the reflector though, is that the color temperature increases or you get a higher Kelvin. Now, this is something that Nanlite knows about and is a trade-off so that you have a brighter light. All right, we wanna go right to the hot spot of the light and take our first reading. And we're looking at about 5881. Second measurement, uh, we're looking at about 58.78. And that can be sometimes what we're looking at when we have a different modifier on the light. Now the reflector, we're gonna do a little trade off. We're gonna ha raise our color temperature, but our light is going to be brighter, okay? So let's do the right side test real quick. Take our first reading, we're looking at about 58.41. Second reading, 58.38 or so. Let's do the left side and see what we get here. All right, so left side, we're gonna have 5804, then 5803. Okay, so we're 5800 all the way across the beam angle here. This allows us to know that because we're plus or minus 200, we're still kind of within the range we need for 56, but we definitely know with the reflector, we're getting higher um, color temperature. I tell you what, let's do the tungsten now and see where we get from there. I'll go back to the center hotspot from the reflector and we'll take a reading. Uh, 3263, 
and lastly 3263. So that's a nice reading right in the middle at the hot spot of the light. So let's do the right side now. And about 3256. And lastly, we got about 3257. All right, so let's do the left side now. So jumping over 3244. Uh, the next one will be 3245. So we're still at 3200 degrees Kelvin, which makes it look good and uniformed all the way across with the reflector. All right, let's jump to another modifier. So I've already pre-assembled my 120 softbox. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the fixture itself so that we can take some readings. All right, so let me get this guy lined up. There we go. Now that he's on, we're locked into place. Close these up. Let's turn the light back up to 100%. And then let's go take a reading. So let's take our first reading right here in the, the hottest spot of the wall, 5573. Eh, about 5575, looking pretty good. All right, let's jump over and do the right side. All right, 5564, 5567. Let's jump to the left side. We are at 5499, 5500. So we're 55 all the way across the actual beam angle with the softbox on, which is really nice. That's exactly where we want to be. Let's jump over to the tungsten and see what we get. Let's take a reading right here in the center. First reading says 32.12 and 32.13. So that's pretty much on the money. That's, that's very good. Let's jump to the right side. Okay. So on the right side, we're looking at 32.15 and about 32.15 or so. So looking very nice. Let's jump over to the left side and we're looking at uh, 31.63. And then around uh, 3163. So really and truly, we're pretty even across this with the softbox in the 3200 degrees Kelvin. We dropped a little on the left-hand side, but it wasn't that bad. It's still manageable for what it is we're trying to shoot. So we're gonna do one more modifier on this 300B, and we're gonna use the FL20G, which is our Fresnel adapter. So let's put this on, get him started. We go and open up the barn doors so that we can see. Now I'm going to leave it as as wide as point because I don't think we need to do anything else to you know take a measurement. Basically, we're just going to see it as it is. So let's grab our meter, make sure that we're at 100% on our light, and let's take a measurement with this Fresnel adapter. All right, right here in the center in the hot spot of the light, take our first measurement, and we're looking at around 5774. Okay. And then our next one is about 57.75. Let's jump over to the right side. All right, so let's do our right side. We're looking at around 57.45 or around 57.43 or so. So not too bad. And then lastly, let's jump to the left side. Our first reading is about 57.47. And our second reading will be around 57.48. So not too bad. We're a little bit over on ours between the 57 and 56 or so, but that's still within acceptable tolerances as far as being able to get that done. Let's jump over to the tungsten. All right, so now we're in the tungsten mode and let's do our hot spot again. We'll take a quick reading real fast. In the center, we're looking at 3244 and then 3243. So we're looking pretty good. Right side, uh, we're looking at around 3257. Eh, not too bad, 3255. All right, let's jump over to the left side. And we're looking around 3245 and 3246. So we're right at 3200 degrees Kelvin is where we wanna be. So let's jump over to the 60B and see what we get with that fixture. So now we're gonna jump over to the Forza 60B. I'm gonna put it on the stand. Our stand stayed in the same place at six feet from my backdrop, um, as well as I've got the light at about 50%. So I'm gonna crank it up to 100% or so. I'm gonna grab my meter, cause it's already ready to go. And let's take a reading. All right, so let's take a reading at the centermost point for this light. And we're looking at about 58.38 and roughly around 58.39. Let's jump over to the right side. We're looking at roughly on this one, 58.35 or 58.32. Lastly, let's jump to the left side. And we're reading about 58.30. And 
and roughly around 58.29. So still a little bit high, but not too bad. So we're a little high without any modifier on this, but let's check to see what the modifiers will do and we'll go from there. But first, let's check out the tungsten. So let's take a tungsten reading in the center point right now on the 60. 32.54 and 32.52. All right, let's jump to the right side. We're looking at around 32.54 and 32.55. And then lastly, let's look at the left side and we'll take a reading. 32.57 or roughly around 32.57. That's pretty good. So we're right at 3200 degrees Kelvin. So let's jump over to the next modifier. So let's try the Forza 60B with the reflector that comes with it. I'm just gonna snap it in real quick. Grab the meter, turn the light all the way up to 100, and let's take a reading. So here's a quick explanation of what's going on with our color readings. Now, the Forza 60B actually comes with the reflector, and the reflector is in there to make the light brighter, sometimes twice as bright. But with that reflector, we get an increase in color temperature, or Kelvin. Now, this is something that Danlight's known about, but it's a trade-off so that you get a much brighter light. Let's take a measurement right there at the hotspot. Yeah, 6049, that's a bit high. 6044, okay. We're gonna need to make adjustments. So this is a solution. We could obviously, since we have the color meter, go and change our actual color temperature on our light. So I'm gonna go back and change it to about 5100 degrees Kelvin. And then let's take another reading. Okay, so let's jump and take a quick reading real fast. So now that we've made our adjustment to 51, we're at 5591. Let's take another reading real quick. 5589, so that looks good. We're right where we need to be. We're almost at 5600, but I'm really at 51 on the light itself. So I've solved the problem for what I had. Let's jump over to the right side, see what we get from there. And we're looking at around 5433 and 5431, almost 55 or so. Let's jump to the left side. We're looking at roughly 5415 or 5414. All right, so around 5455 is what we're looking at for this. Let's go and look at the tungsten side of this now. So, right at the hot spot on our tungsten side, we're at 3305, looking really good. So, 3300 degrees Kelvin, 3305, looking good. Let's move over to the right side. We'll take a quick reading 3255, eh, 3256. So, we're looking good. Let's move to the left side at 3225 or eh, roughly around 3225. Not bad. So at 32, we're dead on for what we need to be for the light. So now we're gonna try the Nanlite Lantern softbox for the Forza 6060B. I've got it set in the Bowens mount. So I'm using the actual Bowens mount adapter for the 60 and I'm going to attach the light to the adapter itself. So it just makes it easier on me. I've got it set for 5600 degrees Kelvin I'm gonna go all the way up to 100%, grab my meter, and let's take a reading. Now, the lantern really brings our light level down, so we're gonna go right here at our hottest spot in the center, take a quick reading, and we're looking at around 5507, pretty good, and then 5509, so it looks really good. Let's jump to the right side, and we are looking at around 5505 or eh, roughly probably 5508. Lastly, we're gonna jump to the left side. And we're looking at 5480 or 5482. So we're looking good. So let's move to the tungsten and let's move into our center position here and take a reading. And we're looking at roughly around 3389 or, or so, and then 3394. Not too bad, looking good. Moving to the right side, 3445 or roughly around 3446. Lastly, we're going to the left side, 3343, looking nice. And lastly, we're looking at around 3344. So, we're pretty even throughout the beam angle for tungsten. So we're looking really good with this light and the lantern. So now that we're done with our testing and we kind of know what our lights can do 
It's important to understand that we can use these lights in the 3200 or 5600 for interviews, for B-roll, and however we wanna set them in our scene. But it's also important to remember when we're using our modifiers, whether NAN lights or another type of Bowens mount modifier, that we're gonna get color shifts and changes. So having a color meter is a great thing to have, but knowing how you're going to use that light is very important. Well, we hope this video helps you understand color temperature a little bit better and what Nanlite does when it picks out its LEDs, whether they're bicolor or variable color. So if you want more information on Nanlite itself, you can always go check us out at nanlightus.com. Or if you want more videos like this, you can go to Nanlite USA and see how our videos will help you with your lights. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.